York, a city built on decades of history, and on Stonegate, one of the oldest streets in this ancient city, is a shop centred on something centuries older. Haunted the Business was six years old last Halloween and the shop I even knew was, I think it was two years old on February the 14th of this year. Catering to the modern day pagan community and other old religious practices, Eye of Newt is based in front of one of York's oldest and most spiritually active houses, Haunted. Haunted is the more commercially known business offering a supernatural tour which takes customers around the infamously haunted 35 stone gate, which attracts a wide array of customers. There's a perception of what our customers would be like, and it's not necessarily they've come in to spend money, we also offer a lot of advice on certain topics as well. Uh, so we get people in asking, but we don't just get sort of goths coming in, we don't just get uh, sort of the Wiccan pagan community coming in. Uh, sometimes it's people coming because they're looking for a gift for somebody uh, and usually get the, the comment of somebody's into that sort of thing. So well, I, we cover such a broad spectrum in here. Uh, we hire the house out to ghost groups to come to investigation on night. We get some of their customers coming in as well uh, for things like Ouija boards, um, some of the protection things that we do, the pendulums. Uh, I want well, the incense Anybody could come in and buy incense. There is definitely no typical customer for that. Working in a place like this um, certainly tests your patience. Um, you have to be very together because this is a balance. A balance between my beliefs and a balance between a job. I would call myself a hedge witch. Solitary practicing hedge witch. Solitary means that I practice on my own. Um, as a lot of other witches practising covens um, and the hedge witch refers to me using traditional natural methods which include herbs, crystals, that sort of thing. I've, I've chosen to practise this for so long because it um, has no limitations, there's no organising body telling us how or when to practise in a certain way, we can do as we please um, and it's the only thing that I've found um, that can give me control. This, this particular spell is um, for my sister. It's a combination of a, of a protection spell and also a, um, something that's going to enable her to see um, the positive stuff around her. Um, it's not going to make her do anything that she's not in control of. It's just going to enable her to um, see things more positively, should we say. But paganism is not the only belief that some employees of I of Mute hold. I would probably deist, uh, which was very active about 350 years ago, but I'm not sure they're popular anymore. Uh, it's, it was the reconciliation between science and religion that the belief there is something more out there, some bigger, higher being that possibly started things off. And when I say starting off in terms of like the Big Bang, therefore you get the reconciliation there with science that we've come from the Big Bang, you don't have the creationist ideas um, that I know the number of religions have. As one of my friends put it, put it uh, God is an absentee landlord. It's quite, quite a good way of phrasing it. However, expressing these beliefs can lead to prejudice born out of ignorance. We cover a lot of different aspects of paganism, witchcraft. We touch on certain other religions as well, so she can't believe in all of them. We had somebody the other day who, after much prevarication, eventually told me what he wanted to know. Having started off with, do you believe in this sort of thing, is why we selling stuff for Satanists? And actually, that's probably one of the religious groups that we don't cater to, other than the occasional book. Um, and he wasn't overly happy when I pointed out that we cater to paganism, which is a much older religion, and Satan is a Christian concept. It's very difficult to explain why other religions and what other religions think of when they hear the word Wicca or Wiccan or witchcraft. The first thing that springs to mind when I hear the term witch is probably, to be honest, 
a, a woman on a broomstick with a big black hat, but that's because I've got little kids, and so we read books where those witches appear quite a lot. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be reading those books, I don't know. But, um, but I'm also aware that that's not the reality. So I think there's a danger for people who are practicing uh, paganism or different occultic religions that actually maybe without realizing it they can be getting involved with what we might call evil spirits the, the, the evil powers in the spiritual realm and I'm, that may not be people's intention but I think when we when we move away from looking at Jesus as the one who can lead us into a relationship with God uh, then we, we get into dangerous ground. You have to see it through the eyes of history and that has been especially in the West, dominated by Christianity. Um, Christianity has demonized, and I use that word deliberately, um, people and women especially, who have been um, dangerous to what that society needed and wanted. I think absolutely um, what, what can happen in society is that there are real prejudices against certain groups of people, um, maybe, and I might be guilty of this because my understanding of, of um, paganism and, and different um, sort of spiritual ways of, of looking at things is quite limited. You know, there might be a danger of lumping people in together and kind of saying, well, these people must be devil worshippers because they're pagans. And I'm sure that's not true. Um, and, and, and you see it in, in history when, when institutions become powerful they often become corrupted. So I think that's happened in probably particularly in the past when the church has had a lot of power in society. People in the church, in fact, have stopped submitting themselves to God and to the teaching of Jesus and, and kind of human desires to, to oppress people and to have power have taken over. And you see that in witch hunts, but lots of other things as well, where, where the church would be, you, you can certainly see, didn't, <clears throat> live itself, live out its calling as it, as it ought to. In the 1700s, scandalous and elaborate actions were taken upon those believed to be a witch. George's family know all too well the pain born in the witch trial. Ancestrally speaking, that my ancestor was the last witch to be hung of witchcraft in Scotland. And um, it's traditionally something you pass along your maternal line. And it was until it got to my grandmother and she didn't believe in it. She decided it was all rubbish. And uh, my mother picked it up when she was a teenager because this thing does attract, particularly teenage girls, when they're in a position in life where they need questions and answers and what's readily available isn't doing them any help at all. Um, but my mother would talk to me when I was very young about her spell books and the things she had done, um, her practicing, and I started to pick it up and I asked about it, and so she bought me the books. Child in honey, child in light. Let your cares take elfin flight, smooth your thorns, be gone sour moods, and witness sunshine interludes. Stamp your foot no more from hence, nor show you such indifference. Speech is sweet, silence is golden. Now you must do just as you're told with love. It's very important that we specify that there's love intention here, so there's no negative repercussions. Because we do believe if we were to do something negative, it would come back on us three times. So next time you hear about witches, don't think of them as myth. They're as much alive as you. If somebody comes in and asks a question, then I will answer them and I will explain. If somebody comes in and says something which they assume to be the case and it's wrong, I will say so. Um, but it's hard not to be preachy. Uh, it's hard not to force your opinions because that's ultimately what this is. It's a belief, it's an opinion. If you have a strong belief in a particular religion, then turning to that at this time is probably the best thing because that's where you draw your strength from. Um, and it doesn't matter what my belief is at that moment, their belief is the important thing. I would encourage people to look into what is it that pagans believe, what is it that witches believe, you know, and, and find out so that you can actually respond to that stuff with, um, with knowledge and understanding. Um, and, and maybe I should do more of that myself. <laughs>